up everybody how we doing what we doing this is fuck that bullshit what's up everybody welcome back to the drip mind channel this is cd.mp3 and i know it's been a very very elongated minute since i posted a video but i'm back and no more slacking no more slacking on the sauce no more slacking on the vids i'm gonna start leaking all my sauce on here so be sure to tune in hit that subscribe button you already know now in today's video i'm gonna be exposing some super secret sauce I've been gatekeeping for like centuries at this point. So this sauce being automation clips. Now, I know you think you know what automation clips are and you may, but I'm going to be showing you guys how pairing some automation clips together, making entire automation chains. It's crazy sauce. People don't talk about, I don't even think people do it, but I like to do it. I kind of started doing this recently and it's crazy. And the beauty of this is you don't need any VSTs. Just use a one shot, a stock FL one shot. You don't need any effects on any effect VSTs or plugins, nothing like that. So it's really pretty crazy, but I'm about to show you exactly what I'm talking about right now. So I want to show you guys how to make automation chains and how to use them and different things. You may watch this and be like, that's a lot of work. I don't feel like doing that. It's horse shit. But if you do, if you do like the concept and you don't really feel like putting in the work, I got you. I recently dropped a kit with some automation chains that I already made. You just drag into one shot, click in a MIDI, boom. Also comes a lot of other sauce that I've been kind of gatekeeping for far too long. So if you want any of that, be sure to check it out. But yeah, let's get right into this. I'm gonna open up this automation chain I already made and kind of show you guys what it does, how to use them. So you can see I already loaded up a MIDI and a one shot into this one. But let's say you're starting from scratch. You don't know what you're doing. All you gotta do, click in a MIDI. You just gotta drag in a one shot, get your MIDI. I made this MIDI earlier right before I started filming the video. I'm gonna copy it in there. And you'll see, I'm gonna play it. And you'll see all these all these knobs that you don't think mean anything, I promise. That's where all the sauce is at, right? So this is before the automation chain. It sounds cool, you know, it's it's nothing crazy, but it sounds cool. But when you put it on the automation chain, that's this one. This is what it sounds like. So you can hear, obviously, there's some delay, but there's a lot of other stuff going on that kind of adds some texture and stuff you won't even think about or even really hear too, obviously. But I'll break it down and kind of, you know, I'm going to give you guys some sauce real quick. First off, I'm gonna I'm also gonna play it going through these uh, like little top menus right here, and you'll see the different shit that's in, in real time. Keep in mind you do have to have the latest version of FL. It's a crazy update that a lot of cool shit. So definitely worth it regardless. Yeah, so you'll see this knob right here. It's like the little LFO thing right there. And basically what this does is it kind of tampers with the sound wave itself, which you can't do easily with other plugins and like actually have control of like where it comes into play. It's a lot, it's a little bit weirder and it's just convenient because it's already right here. I'm messing with the, the speed and if I just solo put it back on here, I'll explain what I'm doing. So we got the MIDI on here and if I were to just, I'll show you like what it looks like if I were to just move the knobs real time. You hear that? Adds a little bit of wobble, and when it get, the speed gets super fast, it's like a lot of texture that you could argue doesn't matter, but you know. I'm one of the people that likes to really pay attention to details because the small things do matter later, and if everything, all the small details are kind of adjusted and fixed like to your liking, it'll really, it'll make a crazy product coming out, so. And if you have automation clips on this, all you have to do, by the way, make an automation clip, just right click any of these knobs. It's pretty much every knob that you see that's like from FL itself, like create automation clip. You can even do it with like the time of the sample, which is kind of cool sometimes. So this is the automation clip I just made. And let's say I want to give it like sort of a wobbly effect. We can do this, kind of like make it like rise in. And you can hear, right? That's, that's pretty cool. You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. You can also do the delay, which kind of offsets it, can add some cool bounce. And another thing I've been doing a lot that just creates like a really crazy bounce, it kind of is like swing, but it's manual in the sense that you can adjust when this swing is like actually being swingy. Uh, just, you'll hear it, ready? Let's say this is an extreme example, but let's say I just wanted to do like this whole thing right there, this right here. There's gonna be a delay. It's kind of hard to hear. Let's make it a little bit higher. You hear what I mean? Adds that extra bounce. 
kind of weird. That's why I don't usually do it this extreme. And if I do, it's usually for like, like that. You know what I mean? Give it a little bit of swing. Give it a little bounce. Make the shift knob kind of like fade in and fade out. It'll give it a cool effect. You know, It'll offset everything a little bit. Make it humanized. Make it feel real. Make it touch the souls of the, the people you're sending these to. Obviously. Another cool thing to do. Echo delay. This. Uh, another another knob I always like suspicious as. Notorial. Another effect I like doing on Asian clips on a lot is the feed knob and the echo delay. Now this is new, I think, with FL20, like the newest version. But if you right click here, you'll notice that you can control like the, the wet factor of the delay or the feedback. So like... And if you use this right and kind of use it at certain like small points where the sample could feel a little bit empty, it adds like an extra layer that kind of like makes it feel a little bit more full and kind of sauces up, you know? Another cool thing I like to do is you can play with the pitch of the delay, which kind of, you know. You hear those little like, little like waterfall effect that adds a whole nother octave to the, the MIDI. Again, we haven't even put this thing in the effect right. You see this? This is scientific stuff. So Another thing, you can always adjust the volume. That's pretty pretty basic, pretty standard. You can adjust this. This is a cool one I like to play with too. Just put Porsche on. You can make the sample sound all slippery and weird, right? You hear that? Do you hear the difference with it? It's like revving up. Like you can't really, it's really hard to kind of have that same effect without this specific type of thing. That's cool. It sounds like a spaceship starting. And that adds a ton of texture, bro. You gotta realize these these bigger producers when they when you're sending them loops, everybody can have a cool MIDI, everybody can have a cool sound. Everyone has the same banks, you know what I mean? Everyone's doing the same chord progressions. What stands apart, really, like at like the, the higher levels, is it comes down to just processing. How do you take the same stuff? Everyone has the same like bag of chords they use. Everyone has the same list of chords. Everyone's got the same list of plugins they go to. How can you take that these tools and make something new? Right, and at the end of the day, it comes down to experimentation. And this, with this, you can get as experimental as you want. You can make something that sounds unique because you're manually adjusting all these things, or you're taking different sounds. You can run through my chains, but honestly, just experiment, make your own stuff. That was a little intermission. Intermission to kind of remind you guys, like, why, why would I need this? Right? You can do stuff with the envelope, which is actually super cool. And basically, you can have some parts where it kind of like you guys all know what attack is, and if you don't, there's no shame in that. It's just like the um like the delay, it like kind of like rises into the sample. It's kind of hard to explain. It's basically like, I'm just gonna play it. I think it'll be easier to, let's do something like this. And you'll notice it kind of turns more into a pad. It's not as like plucky, it kind of slides in. And you'll notice it, especially if I do it like more extremely, get like this. It kind of like fades. It lets the sample fade in, which is just cool. When I say sample in that case, I'm talking about like this actual sound itself. Another thing you can do is the attack or with the uh, release knob. This is a cool one. You can kind of stop things. Like in the beginning, I like to kind of let things glide, kind of be a little bit more open. But then by the end of the pattern, have like a sharp sound or maybe vice versa. I'll try, try it this way. And you'll, you'll really notice it if I kind of, let's say I do this. Boom, right? That's kind of extreme obviously, but. Another way to just create like a unique bounce and stuff that other people can't replicate, right? Another thing you can do is really kind of get crazy with it. If you want, I'm almost saying you have to, but if you want to, you can do some really weird shit. You can even go in here, double click, LFO. I don't even really know what this is. But you can play around with it, you can figure out what it is. And make this shit crazy. You can also, ready? That's a little bit crazy. I don't know if it needs all that, but definitely you you can hear you can hear the difference when it's a little bit more bounce and swing when I do when you do simple things like this. Basically what I'm trying to tell you guys is the automation clip sauce is endless. Experimenting is endless. Do not be afraid to just dedicate some time to just 
figure out like random tools that you can use and try to think about like what am i not utilize because i promise you there's a lot of shit you already have you don't need the next vst you don't need the next whatever there's th all the tools right in front of you even in like stock fl to make really good shit make really good music but you just gotta you gotta think outside the box you know challenge yourself what what i like to think about is how can i make something i've never made before and not only that but ask yourself every time you make a beat did i do anything new and if you didn't then start thinking about it, you know what i mean go in like every file think about like i'm gonna try one new thing that i've never done before and i want to try to fit it and make it work and even if it doesn't fit at the end of the day you just learn something and then the next time you go into a project you can figure it out see if it works Anyways, that was just some cool sauce that I've been kind of experimenting with a lot recently. If you want some of the chains I've already done, again, they're in my kit. I'll put the link down below. Comes a lot of other cool stuff, you know. But generally, the point of this video is to remind you guys, possibilities are endless. You, you don't need a lot to make good stuff. You just need to need a big brain, you know. You got to think about it. You got to think outside the box with it. That's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed this, be sure to let me know. If you have any other super secret sauce things you guys want to see from me, Definitely comment below, but I think me and Jack are going to film a children choir tutorial soon because everyone has been spamming me for that. So that's on the way as well. But yeah, appreciate you guys for tuning in. It's going to be the end of the video. CD Don P3, and peace out.